Good morning, Second Presbyterian and friends and visitors. Good morning. Wonderful to have you here as we gather together again to worship God. Thank you for joining us with your presence and your prayers. We are again in the book of Exodus. God said, I am who I am, and I am is sending you. And we believe that I am is with us. I hope you will carry that with you throughout this week. We are in prayer together, many concerns, also many joys as we see one another a little bit uh, through Zoom and uh, as we speak with one another by phone and email. We are continuing to try to connect and ask you to keep in prayer throughout this week. Uh, Doris Lamar and her spouse continued prayers for Martha and for Katie. Uh, we certainly pray for Kenosha, Wisconsin and another shooting and Jacob Blake and family and all those continuing to be affected by racial discord. Um, and please pray that we can find peace and peaceful solutions. And we also pray continually for our children, for school staff, as schools get back in session, we want to continue to lift up all of them. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Let us worship God.
join with me now responsively in our call to worship? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to God, sing, sing praises, praises, tell God of all God. God's wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered, O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing, he gave them the lands of the nations, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. Just as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses were not perfect examples of those who would be called by God, God used them. God worked with them in their shortcomings and in their glories. Friends, we are just like them. We are not perfect beings, but God chooses to use us. Trusting that God loves us completely, let us go to God with our confession. You are the great I am, the God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob, Leah and Rachel, Joseph and Asenath, Moses and Zipporah. From them have come a mighty people you have chosen to call your own. History has recorded testimony of your mercy that has withstood the ages. What are we compared to your grandeur and grace? Despite our shortcomings, you call us your own and grant us grace and mercy. Continue to help us turn aside and see you blazing in our lives. Let us continue our confession in silence.
Amen. Even when we are reluctant followers, the God of our ancestors promises to be with us always. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. today. Do you remember Miss Marcia Kling? She is a, a member of our church family and she sits right up there in that corner. When she's here, she, you probably don't know it, but Miss Marsh is a TV star. She had a lot of TV programs here in Chattanooga and one of her TV programs that she had, she talked to children and the children were able to think that they talked back to her because Miss Marcia had a magic mirror. She could look through this mirror and at the end of her show, she would say who she saw. So I thought, I'm gonna see if I can get a magic mirror and I can see you all. So I brought my magic mirror with me, see it's a mirror, and I'm gonna look and see if I can see you watching me at home. Okay, let's try it. Miss Marcia said magic words, and I don't have magic words, so I'm going to tap mine. Okay, I see Henry and his little brother Milo. I see Jaina. I see Dexter. Oh, I see Vincent and Haley. I'm so glad you're watching with us today. And I see Kyle and Dallas and Emily and Rivers. And I see somebody trying to hide from me. Landon, I know that's you trying to hide from me, cause, but, I, but I still can see you. I'm so happy that you're with us today. And I'm going to tell you a story while, I'm, while we can see each other. I'm going to set my mirror down here so that I'm going to look at it so I can watch you and you listen to my story. This is a story about Moses. Do you remember last week that Miss Kathy talked about Moses being a baby in a basket and was rescued from the Nile River? Well, now Moses is a grown-up. Okay, Moses made a big mistake, as we all sometimes do, but he ran away. He ran away to another land, and he stayed there for years and years. He stayed there so long that he got married and had a family, and he was working for his father-in-law. He was taking care of sheep which we have had a lot of people in the Bible take care of sheep, and that's one thing Moses was doing. So one day he was out taking care of his sheep. He was walking along, and he saw a fire. When we see a fire, what's the first thing we do? We want to go see what it is. So that's what Moses did. He trotted right over there, and he was looking at it, and he goes, this is the weirdest fire I've ever seen because the bush is not burning up. It keeps burning. So he got a little closer, and the bush talked to him. The bush said, Moses, and he's like, oh. and then he realized it must be God. And he said, here I am. And the bush said to him, take off your filthy shoes, Moses, because you're on holy ground. I want you to stand here in front of me in just your bare feet. So Moses, you do what God says, and Moses did it. So he took off his shoes, and then God said, um, Moses, I'm going to use you to free my people from slavery in Egypt. That The people had been slaves for 400 years, and they were ready to be free and to go home. But Moses was like, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know, God, if I can do this. Who am I? Who am I for this job? And God says, I'll be with you. I'll help you do it. And so then Moses said, what do I tell people when they ask me who told me to do this? And God said, you tell them I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Jacob, I'm the God of Isaac, I'm the God of Joseph. You tell them that, and you tell them that I said, 
And Moses said, well, what should I say when they ask me what your name is? And God said, you tell them that I am. So he was telling Moses that he exists, that he's telling people that he does exist, he is God. He says, I am, there is a real me. And you tell him that. So Moses, he went on after this, and we'll, I'm sure you'll get to talk about that later. But what I wanted to tell you is that even though Moses made a mistake and he ran away, God could still use him, and God could see him. God saw him just like I saw you in this mirror. And just like all the people in church want to see you so much. They love you. They want to, uh, to see you again. We all pray for you. And we're hoping that you do, are doing really well going back to school and everything. So let's have a little prayer. Okay, dear God, please be with these children and help them face the challenges of the new school year. Help them to know that God sees them and God loves them and that the people in church love them. And we cannot wait to all be back together. Amen.
My reading today is from the Old Testament, Exodus 3, verses 1 through 15, Moses at the burning bush. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why this bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Man, it's a long way to this mountain. I hope I've got all my sheep. Uh, trudging with this flock through the wilderness and up here to the top it has been quite a journey. I wonder if anybody else knows how hard it is to keep walking through rocky ground and, and shrubs and, and then a a long way uphill. <laughs> well, look at that. It's a bush, and it's on fire, but, 
but it's not burning up. I've got to get one of those for the garden. <laughs> Jethro will love it. <laughs> Moses. Did someone say something? Moses. Uh, are, are, are you talking to me? Uh, uh, here I am, uh, whoever you are. Do not come near. Remove your sandals. Uh, these, these sandals? Uh, okay. Take off your sandals, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Uh, I, I, I don't see any holes. That's not funny. Oh, right then. Uh, well, off, off with, with the sandals. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, no. Oh, really? Uh, well, uh, um, I, I got to go now. I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and am aware of their suffering. I am going to deliver them from their slavery and take them to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Honey? I love honey. And, and wow, that's great. I, I've been hoping for this day. Thanks for rescuing my people. See ya. Moses, the cries of the Israelites have come to me. I've seen the oppression. My people have been suffering for too long. I see how Pharaoh has mistreated them, trying to make them out to be the enemy. I see how he has been killing my children. I can watch it no longer. So I am sending you to Pharaoh to set my people free. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that's a good one, but then uh, you don't joke, do you? But, but seriously, it, it, it's not like you to make a mistake. Why do you think I made a mistake? Well, uh, who, who do you think I am that I should talk to Pharaoh? I haven't seen him in a, in a long time and, and we weren't that close then. Um, and, and what if they don't believe me? And, and you know, I, I don't speak so good. My words can come out, well, uh, a little slow sometimes. I will be with you. That is what you need to know, Moses. I have a burning desire to care for my people and deliver them from this bondage. I am enlisting you to set them free. And as a sign that I have sent you, when you bring my people out of Egypt, you shall come and worship me here on this mountain. When I bring the people out of Egypt, I, I don't think you understand. Uh, what if something goes wrong? And besides, who are you? Uh, if they ask me who it is that sent me, well, what am I to say? Do you think that by knowing my name, you can control me, Moses? Oh, no. N no, sir. No, Moses. You cannot control me. You will have to learn to trust me. So, Moses, I am who I am. Say to my people that I am has sent you. I am the God of your ancestors, and this is my name forever. 
But is it there's somebody else? Uh, Mo uh, Pharaoh might kill me. The Hebrew people might not like me. They, they might want to get rid of me. Uh, this sounds like a tough job, and, and I've got all these sheep and, and family back in Midian, and I'm getting old. I, I really think somebody else might be better qualified. And on top of that, I think I got poison ivy walking through the brush. Moses, I am a God who chooses to partner with my people. I am a God who sees where evil is rampant and the vulnerable are exploited and my children are suffering. I want you to set this right. I know it is a tough job. I know that you'd rather walk past this burning bush and pretend you didn't see me or hear me. I know that you'd rather talk about a spiritual high than deny yourself and turn your life over to me. Sometimes I may seem far away. This mountain may be invisible. But I am here, Moses. I brought you through the wilderness today, and I will bring you through another. I will never abandon you. I am is present tense. And I am will always be present. Well, since you asked, and, and since you said you would help me, now, I'm no Charlton Heston, but I've already got the white hair, so you won't have to change that. And, and I know you've already been with me. You saved my life. Here am I. I am. We thank Moses for being with us today, and we're so grateful for his witness. And now let us together say what it is we believe using this portion of our confession from a brief statement of faith. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for speaking to Moses, for calling attention to your will for him, for your people. And God, we know that you continue to speak to us. And we pray that you will give us ears to listen and to hear and to not be afraid when you ask us to do your bidding. For we know, God, that there are many places still in this world where people are in bondage, where people are oppressed, where people are suffering. Call to us and give us the strength to respond that we are here. Lord, be with those in our own church family who are suffering today, those who face uncertainties and unknowns, those who are dealing with health issues, with personal issues, with mental health issues, family issues. God, there are many things, many concerns on our plate today. 
but we know that you are a God who is with us and continues to see us and hear us. So Lord, we ask that you continue to hear our prayers for those we love, for those we are concerned about, for those in our own nation who continue to experience prejudice, division, who are made to felt like the enemy. God, watch over us still and be I am for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. we go through another week now, remember that when we look around, 
God is still there and speaks to us. Stay tuned for God's voice, the great I am, the God of our ancestors, the God of our present. And may the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ our Lord, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forever. Amen.